Guys, our big story for today is coming it's from <laughs> it's coming from IGN.com, talking about the reboot. Um, not re. I mean, I guess you could call it reboot in a sense of the Mortal Kombat franchise, and it's coming in the name of uh, Mortal Kombat One. Um, this game is coming in uh, September, and actually, yeah, no, I mean, really, yeah, they are they are billing it as a reboot of the uh, 1993 game. Um, and I'm gonna tell you what, like, I, you know, I, I was looking at the uh, the trailer for this again before the show started, and it looks good. I mean, you know, oh, Mortal yeah. Kombat as of late, um, you know, the last couple of entries have have gone really hard on the cinematics. They really like uh, building out the story and the world of Mortal Kombat instead of it just being about the the combat itself. Um, and it's in, in an environment where there's going to be some increasingly uh, competitive fighting games coming out there in terms of the competitive aspect of it, but also oh, yeah. just the competition of the fighting game industry right now. Uh, man, I mean, all these all these fighters are there are uh, these companies are putting out fighters right now. Uh, like yeah. JoJo's has a new game on game. Uh, it's on Game Pass. Uh, Blaze Blue, um, even like mobile games like Skullgirls is really popular right now. I, I, we're kind of seeing a resurgence, I think, in mainstream fighting games. And I think this is a very smart move to kind of uh, say, hey, we're we're getting rid of the crazy, you know, twenty five different storylines and alternate realities we had in Mortal Kombat uh, eleven. I think was the last entry, and taking it back to um, what you know and love. But uh, reimagined and remastered for a new generation of gamers. Uh, but this game is going to be sporting a 100 gigabyte footprint on your hard drive, which is like it has a Switch version. I don't know how that's going to work. But man, like we 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 just cannot get past this this mode of of games just taking up more and more space, irrespective of the genre of the game. I mean, James, have you, uh, it, it, would you have ever imagined that a fighting game would clock in at something that was more akin to Warzone? I mean, well, for the Switch version, good luck. I'm, I'm predicting <laughs> one or two frames a second. Like, yeah. that, that just seems ridiculous. But I don't know, like, it's really beautiful. Like, uh, I watched the trailer uh, and I'm reading the article. Like, it looks amazing. And I could understand why you would need a little bit more space yeah, but 100 gigabytes, unless you're like preemptively like backloading all the DLC you plan on putting out, because Mortal Kombat 11, I mean, you had Rambo, Robocop, Joker, Turtles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like they had hundreds of dollars of DLC. Like if yeah. you're preempting this to where people don't have to add to their hard drive space, hey, I can respect that. But if it's this and then your DLC is going to take up like another 50 to 100 gigabytes, like, bro, what? Yeah. No, it's a fighting game. But, I mean, Street Fighter Six is about to be out, and if that one is also this size, I mean, this might be the future. Mm. Could be. I mean, Bruno, I mean, but at, at least, right, uh, you know, uh, Street Fighter uh, Six will have an open world, like, aspect yeah. to it, where, like, there's progression, and it's more than just... I mean, I, who knows what the actual features of Mortal Kombat 1 were, but I, I would think that if it's being billed as a reboot that it's going to be you know at, at its core about the the gameplay and not necessarily the uh the uh, accoutrements of uh, yeah. what comes with it right yeah well i mean I, you're right this is a big year for for fighting games we've got the big three right we've got tekken we've got um street fighter and we've got mortal Kombat coming out so in terms of the classics these are the og3 you know aside from like virtual fighter um, but you know, I think that this, first of all, seeing the trailer is exactly why my mom wouldn't let me play it back in the nineties. <laughs> like if she, that's what she thought mortal Kombat was in the nineties was this trailer. And it, it obviously wasn't right. But like, that was the game, right? Like there were two games that were on the do not play list for moms in the nineties and, um, one of them was Mortal Kombat and the other was Grand Theft Auto. So those were the, the two biggies, right? Um, mm -hmm. Hey, don't you forget know, Conker's Bad Fur Day came out in the 90s too. It <laughs> did. We've, we've talked about that many a times. And, 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 and fortunately, the marketing around that snuck it in as a, you know, yeah. you, could, you could pass mm -hmm. that off. It's like, oh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's um, just a squirrel. 
It's just a squirrel, Mom. No big deal. But, like, you can't get around Grand Theft Auto and Mortal Kombat. It's in the names, right? Like, it's in the actual name of what you're getting into. And, uh, you know, it was shocking to see the the size of this game. And as I've, ta- as I've played Tears of the Kingdom, as I've, um, you know, been playing a lot on the switch in terms of certain games you know the the i would say the first party titles that nintendo has it makes me wonder why why we're spending so much time on graphics right at the expense of gameplay and i think that that's where i that's what i'm hoping doesn't happen with mortal kombat 1 Right. Like I, yeah, the cinematics and stuff are really cool, but is that going to take me out of the experience? Is there going to be something that allows me to approach it as a newcomer like street fighter six? Because that's the issue that I have with fighting games right now. It's not the fidelity. It's not the frame rate. Right. And I think we, we are, we're getting hung up on, you know, on graphics. And I think as gamers, We've always done that, right? Like since the, you know, especially as 90s kids, seeing us go from, you know, 16-bit to 32-bit to, you know, yeah. so on and so forth, you know, 64, and then, you know, we've, we had the Dreamcast, right? Like there were so many instances where we saw graphic improvements and it, it is phenomenal to see, you know, James mentioned Final Fantasy, but at the same time, you also have to wonder... You know, like you said, why why am I why am I taking up a tenth of the the total hard drive space, you know, on a terabyte, right? If I'm having to put through a hundred gigabytes for this one game. And right now the 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 solid state external hard drives or or um you know inclusions for uh xbox are are running like two to three hundred dollars yeah so it's it's a really hard sell to to try and buy an internal hard drive like that and and house all these games on there and for someone like me i like a huge library right like i like a big library that i can just pick and choose what what i want to play but i've had to make sacrifices i can't keep red dead redemption and grand theft auto like on at, on my uh you know xbox at the same time as, as much as i want to play those because it's too ridiculously big and i yeah. wonder how the long term will affect these types of games being as big as they are. Are people going to sacrifice hard drive space for new games? Or are they going to say, you know what, I'm keeping this on my hard drive because it's my favorite game and, you know, I'm, I, I play, you know, I, I play it every day. How many people are there that, that do that, right? Yeah. You know, versus like the stunningness that that Tears of the Kingdom came out, came out with. And I think it's like a 16 gigabyte game. Right, mm. like that's, that's <laughs> like nothing. <laughs> it's yeah, nothing compared to what it is. So, for a platform fighter, I'm wondering how much ray tracing do we really need <laughs> in this experience? <laughs> like, I don't know that I necessarily need to see the the light reflect off the blood droplets that are <laughs> that are coming out. Of, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I, maybe if Brad were here, he'd he'd uh, disagree with me <laughs> and say that that's exactly what we need. We need yeah. extreme graphic detail. But uh, yeah, Nick, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I I, I tend to agree. I don't know. I, I I will say this, and James, you can probably shed some more light on this. Um, you know, I think the Xbox has kind of created its own problem in the issue of external memory because those those swappable uh, external hard drives, I think only one manufacturer is making those right now. I believe it is Seagate. Seagate, yeah. Yeah, and a problem with that is that because there's simply no competition, I think they are getting away with charging a lot more than it, those those should be charged for. I agree. Um, and there's also some, there was some supply issues. I think these days you could pretty much walk in. But yeah, the cost for like a two terabyte is just, it's ridiculous. But I mean, James, the cost for, uh, for like the PS5, I think that's one of the, uh, any Thing. a selling point is the fact that even though it's not like an officially licensed product you can get um these uh solid state drives for much cheaper yeah y- you can um i think 
so me personally, uh, John and I actually uh, talked at great lengths about this in one of our episodes on, on, on our podcast. Last year, the video game industry made $184 billion, more than every major sports organization in the world combined. That's insane. And yeah. I think... I think we're now kind of seeing the balloon, like it's over burgeoned because they're just pushing stuff out like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter VI, Tears of the Kingdom. There's so much coming out and so much of it is kind of really hurting us in the sense like, because the PS5, yeah, they advertise a terabyte, but in reality you have 855 gigs because of some arbitrary, we have to hold stuff for other things. When is it going to be? I think that's false good? advertising. 100 <laughs> percent. like those hard drives they shouldn't be 300 dollars. It, it's a freaking hard drive yeah. like yeah if it's now if it was like a 20 terabyte hard drive okay yeah sure yeah. like that checks out like that's insane you can probably you. put everything in there and your mother on there yeah and still have plenty yeah like stop pricing people out because so many people they rely on they rely on affordability and this yep. generation is kind of taking the affordability away. And Mortal Kombat 11, I mean, it's a prime example. If you look at the specs that they're wanting people to have on PC, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty penny. Like, you're talking a decent chunk of change just to make sure you're able to operate on that. You, it's a AAA title. AAA, we always know, you know, they, like even Final Fantasy 16, they're pulling out all the stops. I get that. I respect that. I'm all for that. But pull it out in a way that's more effective for us as consumers mm -hmm. because you have so yeah. many people like, like you said, Bruno, it's going to be, Oh, Hey, I've got these 30 games on here. I don't want to get rid of what do I sacrifice? And then you load up mortal Kombat, and then you kind of have like download deletion remorse. And it's like, I just got rid of all this. Oh no. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. No, download I completely again. agree. Yeah. Download, <laughs> you know, and I, again, like I said, I think that a lot of times we look at the we, we focus so much on how the game looks versus like how it actually plays and, and the, the fun factor of a game. And that, I think, is is the real selling point for me now as an adult. You know, I, sure, I was I was into Flash at one point and, and and all type of glitz and glamour towards video game, you know, graphic capabilities. But, you know, playing on the switch has taught me that this limited hardware is actually more fun than I've had on Xbox in a couple years. And that's mm. saying something, right? Like, you know, we talked about how Final Fantasy is coming out and that's a PS5 exclusive, which again, you know, it, it cracks me up that we're even having a debate about um, Microsoft purchasing Activision Blizzard, you know, as they're going to be a monopoly when PlayStation continues to do the things that they've always done to create a space that is exclusive for their players, right? Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that, like you said, Nick, when we're looking at um, building a digital library on today's consoles, uh, you uh, cloud gaming looks phenomenal, but it's still got a long way to go, right? Yeah. It's no different than Enron getting there first when it came to the the blockbuster thing. You know, like uh, back in the day, Enron was like, you know, uh, we're going to invest in streaming movies, and so they 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 put a whole bunch of money into blockbuster, and we're basically going to create Netflix before Netflix, but they the the technology wasn't there right it's not quite there yet and that's the problem with these game file sizes is that they're too big for us to just go ahead and say you know let's sacrifice all this this uh hard drive space you know because i got we got you know news for you just like uh james mentioned this is going to be the new standard moving forward if we're charging $70 for a game, one of the great ways to make it seem inflated is to make it <laughs> make it a big game. Oh, it must be good. There's 100 it's gigabytes got, worth of stuff game. in there. It's got to be good. It's got to be right? good. Like, They're going to data mine that game. Yeah, of course. Why? Quit the 
Bill. 